heavy. Moisture drips down your forehead. Pain shoots through your fingers. Your hands shake as they reach upward. Your forehead remains drenched no matter how much you wipe. Can you feel it crawling through you? Tendrils squirming in your chest, gripping your heart, piercing your belly. Your bones popping, your flesh swelling. I can. I see it in you. I feel it in me. We are lost. I will be quick with my blade. First you, then the others, then myself. Your minds intertwine. You sense a touch of uncertainty, a touch of disgust. I cannot trust my own mind, so it seems I must trust yours. I will wait, but know this, I am watching. If the sickness does not pass come dawn, I will end us all. Just in time, you are transforming. Yes, you have. I saved you before. save you again. Don't worry. You will not become a mind flayer. Not while I'm around. I'll protect you. much time, so listen closely. There is great potential within you. It comes from that parasite. Your instinct is to resist the power it gives, but you must accept it. Nurture it. I will keep it from consuming you. But for the sake of both of us, you must learn to wield it. for the fate of Feyrun. A fight we are losing. For now. You can change that. But only if you embrace your potential. I have to go. The enemy is closing in. I will be back. I'd be back. Don't worry. I have things under control. For now. 
You haven't been using the Parasite's power. You think you don't need it. But things haven't gone as you expected. You hoped a druid as powerful as Holsin might be able to remove your tadpole. But he couldn't. You're desperate to be rid of it. Understandable. But you're looking for solutions in the wrong places. It's complicated. But I'm an adventurer. Just like you. Just like you, I was infected with a Mind Flayer parasite. Just like you, I seek to be free of it. But to do that, we'll need to think beyond local healers. Your parasite is unusual. It is wrapped in magic that prevents its removal. Until the source of the tadpole's magic is destroyed, any attempt to remove it will kill you. You were lucky that Holson knew this. His instincts are right. The parasites were merely a symptom of a greater sickness in Faerun. I'm not sure yet. To find the answers, we must first find the source. These parasites are more than illithid spawn. They are vessels for control. The infected hear the voice of the Absolute and believe it to be a god. That is how the cult of the Absolute is spreading. The highest of their rank, the True Souls, carry a tadpole just like yours. It is how they receive their orders. It is what makes them obey. When the order to transform is given, it will not be a matter of days. They will be Mind Flayers in an instant. Were it not for my protection, so would you. I have powers of my own. Unique powers. But know that we are alike. I've been trying to escape from this evil for a long time. Once, I almost succeeded. Through you, I've been given a new chance. You can go where I cannot, and I can protect you from that evil. If we work together, we may turn this around. Hells, they need me. I have to go. No, it isn't safe. The power I use to protect you I stole it from someone. They want it back. I will hold them off for as long as I can. But sooner or later I will be worn down. You must discover the source of the magic that controls the parasites before that happens. The cultists are gathering at Moonrise Towers. Use the powers your parasite gives you to convince them you are one of them. And when you find the source of their magic, destroy it. Go. Our freedom depends on it. The voice of the Absolute is strong here. And getting stronger. I don't know how much longer I can resist it. But it's good to see you're making progress. You took an unexpected route here. You did a brave thing, saving those people in the grove. Don't be so hard on yourself. It's not your fault the world is wicked. You did the right thing. The hurt runs deeper than he's willing to show you. of the Absolute is stronger this time. Beneath the resilient veneer, a touch of fragility. He needs comfort.
It's been a very long time since someone did that. For me. Of course. It just doesn't stop. We are being bombarded by waves of telepathic energy. Wave after wave with hardly a breath between them. I almost dare not rest. Each wave a set of orders to the infected. The order for your transformation has been given many times already. I just hope my powers last long enough to see this through. So you came, in spite of all my warnings. Disappointing. We will talk in private, just the two of us. I may have made a mistake trusting you. I told you to stay away from the Gith Yankee, but you just couldn't help yourself, could you? to murder me. I told you I stole the artifact from someone. Well, I stole it from Vlakith. Since then, she has become... desperate. Vlakith wants me dead because I know her secret. It is a secret so great that if her people ever found out, that would be the end of her rule. The end of her. That same secret is how I've been protecting you from the Absolute. I can hear your thoughts. You think I'm lying. Vlakith warned you that I would try to deceive you, but consider this. What reason have I to deceive you? I want the same thing as you. Freedom. I'm on your side. I have been since the very beginning. told you I protect you, that I saved you, that I'm just like you. If this was not enough to convince you, what more is there to say? It seems I was right to put my faith in you after all. Thank you. Vlakith will be furious, to make no mention of your Gith Yankee companion. The Lich Queen fears nothing more than the loss of her empire. The knowledge I have of her deception will bring that about. Godlike in power, yes, but with none of the sanctity. Vlakith is lying to her people. She pretends to know how Gith destroyed the Mayan Flare Empire. In truth, she knows nothing. If the Illithid Empire were ever to return, she would be incapable of stopping them. And if her people found out about her impotence, there would be mutiny, revolution, the end of her rule. But that very power, the power to resist Illithid control, which Vlakith only pretends to know, is how I've been protecting you. I suppose she hoped to extract it from my corpse. Since you spared me that fate, she will come for you. She most certainly will. I have delayed long enough. The next attack is overdue and I can't risk you being caught in the middle of it. I need you out there, searching for the Absolute. You are on the right path to Moonrise Towers. Return to it. Be warned. The Inquisitor awaits your return from this place with orders to kill you. No doubt the rest of the crush will join him. Good luck. End 
death, the body is cooling, but energy radiates from the stone. Remarkable. Truly. Now the picture comes together. The Absolute is neither God nor man. It is the Elder Brain you saw, held here by those three against its will. The crown it wears controls it, and these stones control the crown. It has been dominated. Tem a temporary reprieve, but a welcome one. With the brain on its way to the city, its influence here is weakened. The crown's markings suggest it was forged in Netheril, an ancient empire whose mastery over magic rivaled that of the gods. It is a crown of domination. The stones were taken from its crest. They are never stones, imbued with the ability to control the wearer of the crown. The crown's netherese magic must be the true source of the parasite's abilities. This must be what elevates their potential. And it must be the reason nobody could heal you. If the crown can do this to the parasites, I dare not imagine what it is doing to the brain. One of them I know, Lord Enver Gortash, an arms dealer and a slaver, a worshipper of Bane, the god of tyranny. The other is a mystery to me, but the way she spoke, it's most likely she follows Baal, the god of murder. Ketherick was a follower of Merkel, which means the absolute is a front for the gods of death, and our enemies are the chosen of the dead three. Bane, Baal, and Merkel. The tyrant, the assassin, and the necromancer. They are known to pick from their most devout followers a chosen, granting them incredible powers. Each one alone would be a formidable enemy, but working together and controlling an elder brain, I cannot imagine what they might achieve. Prepare for the fight of our lives, and the lives of everyone in Faerun. The army of the Absolute is marching on Baldur's Gate. Within the city, an elder brain brimming with power, ready to turn everyone within its reach into mind flayers. All it needs is an order. An order the Death God's Chosen are on the cusp of giving. We must wrest control of the brain from the Chosen before that happens. We must take their stones. Our chances of success are slim, but we must not fail. If we fail, everything ends. I will be your shield, but you must be the sword. And when the chance to strike comes, you must take it. For there may only be one chance. We leave the heart of the Absolute alive, thanks to you. You did well to defeat Ketherick. But Ketherick was only the first to fall. There are many more battles ahead, and they will not be so easily won. You will need allies. Jahira's wisdom will be an asset to you on the journey ahead. Her harpers, too. Halsin's strength and loyalty will bolster you in times of need. But if we are to succeed, we will need others. Even if the buildings are demolished, there are always survivors. There are always those who will fight. Baldur's Gate may not know it yet, but its fate is bound to ours. Seek on its streets those whose purpose aligns with our own, and invite them to our cause. Together, we will put an end to the Absolute, the Chosen, all. You will not have long to wait. All you need to do now is sleep. But 
sleep is not for you. Hear me. Gather. The reckoning is upon us. The city thirsts for domination. March. Join. Fight your way to the portal. I need your help. That orb is about to erupt! Join me. Fight. Eden 
resisted against Githyanki. We cannot. We must not. Your blind loyalty will be your undoing, Lazel. Fight with me for your own survival. Together, we can turn the tide. Look at me like that. I am a mind flayer. Yes. Without me, you would be a slave to the absolute. It's obscene to owe my life to a damned geek. No more lies, no more tricks. I will have answers. You may call me the Emperor. An adventurer, I came from Baldur's Gate, though I was never one to be constrained by circumstance. I longed for more. That longing brought me to Moonrise Towers on a search for treasure. To a colony of Mind Slayers who caught me, changed me into what I am now. I serve the Elder Brain, the one you know as the Absolute. I was a thrall like any other, but I was fortunate. I broke free and started a new life in my old city. I sustained myself on criminals, unglamorous, but there are plenty of them, rarely missed, and they fueled me when I did my work. I had the good fortune to meet Duke Stelmay. We formed a partnership, and through her, I became the governing force behind the Knights of the Shield, the largest mercantile operation in Baldur's Gate. People referred to me as the Emperor. Such was my influence, though of course they had no idea what I really was. My needs were sated. I was happy. For a while, until my true nature was discovered by the tyrant himself, Lord Gortash. He tore me from my home and brought me back to the brain where I became a slave once again. A slave he continued to call the Emperor. The name was intended as a slight to remind me of the heights from which I fell. But I have grown fond of it. It encapsulates well who I've become. Indeed, his hubris knows no bounds. To enslave me, that was his nature. But to enslave an elder brain, a questionable decision. I shall look forward to sharing his downfall. Rather them than potential future allies like you. Not all mind flayers are alike. I have always valued freedom above all else in my past life and present. It has been a burning need within me for as long as I can remember. We fought to tame Prince Orpheus, the son of Gith herself. Orpheus? Impossible. He was slain by Shastil Kithrak himself. Quite possible, I assure you. His power has been the source of your continued protection against the voice of the Absolute. The power to disrupt hive mind communication. It is the same power that enabled Orpheus, his mother, to bring about the fall of the Illithid Empire eons ago. A power she passed on to him, and that I leveraged for you. When Orpheus' mother left, a usurper took her place. Vlakith declared herself queen of the Githyanki. Vlakith wanted his power, but Orpheus rose against her, and so she sealed him and his honor guard 
within this prison. Bound by infernal chains, Orpheus could never leave. Bound by duty, his guard never would. They were close to breaking my hold on that prince. And if they had succeeded, we would be lost. I am relieved. You have embraced your potential enough that you could help me eliminate them. Alone, Orpheus will be much easier to control. Most certainly Orpheus. He is a threat to her reign. Some Gith Yankees still revere him in defiance of their teachings. Blackith was safe as long as they believed him to be dead. But as you can see, he is very much alive. I don't understand. The histories claim the prince was burned to ash in the skies. Your histories are fabrications. The prince was not killed. As you can very well see, he was in prison. She kept him this way because she was reluctant to eradicate such power. Power that she might one day wish to take from him. If the Githyanki ever find out what she has done, there will be civil war. Blacketh will be finished. No. God has sent me on a mission to retrieve the astral prison. I was one of many but the first to find it. How Gortash or the other Chosen learned of its existence, I do not know. The moment I found it, I felt a change. My free will returning. I followed the feeling inside and found Orpheus. I realized what the prison was for, containment. While my body was within the prison's bounds, my mind was free. I could resist the Elder Brain, the Chosen. Better yet, I could plan to overthrow them. All I needed to do was subdue Orpheus and find allies in the outer world. You. There may come a time when that is necessary. But there is no guarantee that his power would survive his passing. The risk is too great. The moment his protection is gone, he would become enthralled to the Elder Brain, just as I would. We may look different, but to the Elder Brain we are already the same. Thralls in its design. I appreciate that. But this is what I am. My original body was destroyed when I transformed. When I first escaped the Elder Brain, I searched for a new vessel. But the longer I inhabited this one, the more it grew on me. I realized that returning to my former self would only impose limitations. Any advantage I could gain by restoring my original appearance, I already had to hand in the form of magic and that humanoid shape you've come to know. As an Alithid, I have far surpassed who I ever was before. You too should embrace this change. I believe we'll have a better chance of defeating the Elder Brain if you embrace your latent Alithid potential. I've been studying you for a while now. I believe I can trigger the next stage of your tadpole's life cycle while continuing to preserve your independence. You have seen what I can do. Imagine yourself with the same strength, the same intelligence, the same devastating beauty. If you let me, I can evolve you. You will be able to do things you never thought were possible. There will be physical alterations, of course, but only partial. You will retain most of your current form, and you will soon see that the benefits outweigh any perceived loss. The answer is twofold. One, I can, but it would kill you, as I told you before. Two, why would I? You have done well with the limited form you have. 
but you would do far better as an illithid. So, do you wish to evolve or not? Skrah! Whatever this geek offers is no gift to you. You continue to surprise me. Your mind is truly something special. Now, hold out your hand. It wants to evolve, but it cannot do so alone. It must commune with another. The tadpole screams for growth with painful intensity. It has been starved of life, of purpose. It welcomes your probing like a void waiting to be filled. If you let it, it will evolve you, just as the Emperor said. A coldness seeps through your veins as the tadpole awakens, its yearning almost unbearable. Your mind is a veritable feast. The tadpole's essence courses through you. Where it touches, your flesh, glands, organs contract and flood with pure thought. You feel different. Your body has never felt more connected. Your mind present in every flex of a joint or muscle. You are exquisite. When your allies see what you can do, I hope you encourage them to try it for themselves. But we mustn't lose focus. We need to resume our journey. You heard the Chosen. The Brain has gone to the city, and the army marches to follow. We must not let them reach it. We must find the Brain, and bring it under our control. Netherstone. The Chosen's control of the brain has been brittle. It's rebelling against Orin and Gortash. Fiercely. I suspected that when we took Ketherick's stone, the brain would begin to break free. Those brain quakes confirm that my suspicion was correct. I do not know what happens now when it receives their orders. And I do not dare guess. You feel the Emperor's fear as if it were your own. An Elder Brain enslaved is one thing. An Elder Brain unleashed will be the end of everything. Beautiful, isn't it? The mighty Prince Orpheus, contained in submissive slumber. Come. You may as well sit a while, now that you are here. Your company isn't unwelcome. An accurate summary. I have found myself distracted of late. I'm haunted by memories. They are relentless. I can think of nothing. No one. I knew her, Berlin, when she was alive. You thought you were my first ally. Far from it. I have long sought the allyship of others. It is the only way to succeed. Though my relationship with Berlin was different from my relationship with you. In a way, but not the way you're thinking of. 
In life, she was my business partner, back when we ran the Knights of the Shield. A difficult task for a mind flayer. Duke Stelmane trusted me, and the city trusted her. I conceived the plot, but Berlin took center stage. It was she who met with the merchants, politicians, and patriarchs. It was she who negotiated deals and signed off on agreements. Her rooms played host to the most important conversations in the city. Together, we brought order to chaos. At its height, everything that happened in that city went through the shield. Through us. I could not have done any of it without her. Just as I cannot do any of this without you. But now, she is gone. I appreciate your understanding. What I feel is deeper than superficial cures can reach. And not entirely unwelcome. Most people think that mind flayers are soulless husks who feel nothing. I am glad you are not most people. is rebelling again. I need to focus, and so do you. The Elfone Tavern. I wonder if my old things are still there. They could be of use to me. My old home. Thank you for bringing me back. Look around. You'll find some of my things still intact even useful to you. A recipe for Fiddle Head's food. A favorite meal of mine. When I had need of meals like that. An old container for brains. Empty. Shame. It would have been nice to find one to sustain me now. The chains I used to buy my meals. Villains and lawbreakers. You see, I tried to exercise morality where I could. With my own sword. My first purchase as an adventurer. No use to me anymore. It's yours, if you want it. My cutlery set. A gift from my mother. The butter knife is missing, but otherwise it looks to be complete. I don't need it anymore, but the memory stirs something in me still. My old wardrobe. The home of all my disguises. We are what we appear to be, and so appearances matter. A shell, a keepsake from my final voyage, pinched in a moment of sentimentality. Rascal's collar, my poor four-legged friend. Their lives are so brief, so simple, and yet full. There she is, in all her glory. Duke Belen Stelmay. say that home is where a person can be their truest selves, without guile, without pretense. You did well to see off the Githyanki who had invaded mine, and now that you have seen where I come from, you know all there is to know about me, at least all that matters. The flavors of my favorite fiddlehead soup. Should you wish to experience it for yourself. My beloved confidant and loyal companion rascal. The very first reward I gifted myself on completion of my first adventure. The garments with which I concealed and later constructed my appearance as the Emperor. I have no more secrets for you. No need to resort to subterfuge. We are true allies now, working towards a common goal. Minus 
necessity, not design. But I'm glad you appreciate the richness of my experience. Yours has been no less exciting, but even with all your experience, it has not been easy. The only way we were ever going to get close enough to the brain to destroy it was by working together. But few would trust a mind flare. So I did what I had to to convince you. I studied you. Your motivations, your actions, your desires. I deduced the best way to align your goals with my own. that you were just a problem to be solved. And not an easy one at that. But I persisted. I needed your absolute dedication to the cause. I anticipated the challenge, and I anticipated your resistance. What I didn't anticipate was how reasonable you would be. You don't like to be coddled, cajoled. But you responded well to logic, to rational arguments, to cold, hard facts. You saw straight to the core of what really mattered. I didn't get that impression, and my calculations are never wrong. of feeling, the Emperor's feeling, heat, care, arousal. into yours, cold, smelling faintly of vanilla and garlic. Its breathing quickens as you pull in close to its face, its excitement palpable. You pause a moment as a thought occurs to you. Where is a mind flayer's mouth? A memory stirs, diagrams in a book you read long ago. The Mind Flayer's mouth is underneath the tentacles. I can make this easier for you if you'd like. My other form might be more familiar for you to navigate.
you ever dreamt of and more. The single greatest experience of your life. Pleasure upon pleasure as mind and body intertwined. It was hard to tell where thoughts ended and feelings began. You can read the Emperor's expression better now that you've connected on a deeper level. You know it feels the same way. It seems the tadpole allowed you to share more than you would have liked with your companions. I said I'd protect you from the absolute, not each other. And I was distracted. Don't worry. I'll make sure they don't remember a thing. Come. It's time to get dressed. We have work to do. I am tempted, but it will be quite some time before I am uh, able to do that again. And time is not on our side. The Elder Brain's hide mind has grown to monstrous proportions. And through the Crown's magic, it has complete control over each and every member. It was intelligent before, but now, with its hide mind established across the city, it is well on its way to becoming indestructible. We must stop it while we still can, before we too become its slaves. Dragon's spirit floods your mind and memory in a great torrent of power. He is with you. He is within you. He is you. Disbelief and resentment rise within you, only to be stopped at your mouth. The worm has claimed you and speaks through you. I am Ansel, heart of the gate. Butchered in flesh, risen in spirit. Ansel wends his way through your mind like an unstoppable river. Your body is unmoving, yet thought flows effortlessly between you. The spirit pauses and you feel the astral prism stir. Ansel senses the Emperor's presence within it. Answer me, Facey. Why have you come? A deep sigh resonates within you. The torrent stills, only disturbed by the dragon's next words. Brack, my words aren't meant for you. They're meant for him. The Emperor stirs in the astral prison, and in you, calm, curious, and detached. Old man. Your presence has stirred me, as it ever did. I am awakened. Answer me. It's been too long. Alderaan? No. I don't believe it. We knew each other once. Long ago. We crossed the Kalim together. And sailed Yal Tengri. We built a city by the sea. Ansa was my friend. Friend, yes, and more. Hunt. 
Until you killed me. Have you come to dance on my bones, Borderan? Was slaying me not satisfaction enough? Satisfaction? No. You left me no choice. You had every choice. You were becoming a lithid. I offered you merciful death. You chose to fight. And now you bring your thrall before me. How far has the great Balderan fallen? Stillness. Ansur's consciousness hovers just above yours, searching, seeing. Dear Ansur, enough! I gave you everything, Bolderan, and you repaid me in slaughter. It is time I return the favor. Let my bones rise and the storms gather. Witness, Bolderan, the final tempest has come. I am the heart of the gate. I am the one who roars. This time, you will not escape it. Ansor. I never thought I'd see him again. I was. Now, I am much, much more. But it seems you are more interested in my past. Such sentimentality. Very well. It's like I always told you. I was just like you. An adventurer who yearned for greatness. And in mortal terms, I achieved it. As captain of the Wandering Eye, I acquired enough gold to found Baldur's Gate. I stayed for a while to watch my city grow. But it was not enough. I grew restless again. The sea called to me, and I ran to her with open arms. Life at sea was not easy. Our last adventure was ruinous. My ship was destroyed. My crew lost. But my spirit was far from broken. I was determined to return in triumph once again. I heard of treasure in Moonrise. I strove to find it. What I found was an illithid colony, where I acquired a tadpole much like yours, and became a mind flayer, enthralled to the Elden Brain. It was Ansor who found me. Ansor who pulled me from the Brain's domination. Ansor who brought me home. He sought to cure me of my sickness, called on every healer he could find, nearly broke his spirit in the attempt. But he failed to understand. I wanted no healing. I was not sick. Of course I do. More so because it was Ansor. Even after he had exhausted all possibility of reversing my condition, he still clung to hope. I tried to convince him of my reality. I was on the cusp of greatness beyond my wildest dreams. But all he could see was a mind flayer. He came to me as I slept. A mercy killing in his mind. I saw the tears. I felt his grief. I had no choice but to kill him first. It was an act of self-preservation. Me too. I hope I never find myself in that situation again. While the past is beyond my influence, the present is not. It is time we move on. Two nether stones remain in the hands of the Chosen. We must find them before we confront the brain.
this is not over. in time. The situation is worse than I thought. This is an elder brain. No longer. The magic of the crown has caused it to evolve. It has become something more. Another brain. I thought so too, but that was when I believed it was still an elder brain. It has been anticipating our every move from the start. I underestimated it. We will need to rethink our plan. I have assessed our encounter with the nether brain from every angle. I know why we failed. The problem was not the stones. The problem was you. You can make only one move at a time, but the netherbrain calculates every possible move at once. It knows what you will do. It knows everything you could possibly do. You cannot outmaneuver it. To defeat it, you would have to think like an elithid. Better yet, be one. Your mind is not capable of this. Mine is. You will give the stones to me. I will assimilate Orpheus, and then I will be able to leave this prison to face the brain. Assimilate him? Skva! No, we must liberate him. Impossible. You have no means of liberating the Githyanki Prince. If the Netherbrain is to fall, the Prince must be assimilated. In theory, yes. You have embraced transformation so far, but this would be a complete evolution. And you will be an illithid for the rest of your days. Is this really something you would be willing to accept? This isn't a decision to take lightly. We should talk first. I trust you have aired opinions and grievances and made your decision. Are you ready to become a Mind Flayer? Very well. I have the means to evolve you. I took this one from the Nautiloid. I have been nurturing it ever since. Priming it for your use. It is not dissimilar to the experience you already had with the previous one. Only this one is much more potent. All you have to do is open your mind to it. Its latent potential will do the rest. between thought and feeling is gone. Your mind and body are as one, bristling with concentrated cerebral energy. Exactly as the Emperor described. But there is something else. An emptiness to be filled. A hunger to be sated. It is overwhelming. You feel it, don't you? The hunger... 
Embrace it. Feed. challenge now lies ahead of us, the nether brain. Come, we must follow the brain's path. This time, we will not fail. Amplifying the Netherbrain's power, and the very place that we will be able to dominate it, that's where we should use the Nether Stones. Shit! That can't be good. and lifted. When the netherbrain died, the tadpoles died with it. No offense meant, of course. I can never forget your sacrifice for us. For the city. And rightly so. You are better now than you have ever been. They'll write stories of this, of course. Each fable sprouting more falsehoods than the last. But for that one seed of truth, you... you did this. Their concerns are so trifling, are they not? Look at you. You're glorious. The greatest ally I could have wished for. You know, this partnership doesn't have to end here. You and I could do wonderful things. We could rebuild the Knights of the Shield and run it together. What do you say? Have I ever told you how much I enjoy you? Lead the way. I expect there have been other reunions to which I was not invited. 
There you are. I was hoping you'd make your way over. <laughs>